get another perspective now uh, from Clayton Anderson. He's a retired NASA astronaut. Uh, Clayton Anderson, a great uh, privilege and an honor for us to welcome an astronaut or a retired astronaut uh, to the Nexus for the first time. Uh, so thank you for joining us. My pleasure, sir. Uh, you served 167 days in space, most of that time in the International Space Station. You're now a motivational speaker and an author. A lot of people in the media will try to make comparisons between uh, your time out there, just two or three of you up in the space station, and their time in uh, lockdown or self-isolation on Earth. Um, do you tell me, does the comparison stack up in any way? Sure, there are always some things that uh, match. For example, uh, I lived in space for five months with two uh, gentlemen from Russia, two Russian cosmonauts. And the thing that most people want to know about is what did we do? How did we keep ourselves busy? And that's the trick, basically, if there is a trick, is to have a schedule, stick to that schedule, and try to uh, come up with new things within that schedule to make it new and different since you feel like you're doing everything over and over and over again. And presumably you have to have some sort of preliminary training to kind of get you ready for living up there with just a couple of other guys and away from your family. And in this circumstances, many families find themselves split up. We had a lot of training, yes, but most of that was technical training on how we were going to live and work on board the station. The aspect of the psychological training that many people on Earth are undergoing today with the virus uh, is a little bit different but they can take lessons learned from us and maybe make their situation better. For example, staying with a schedule every day and trying to find ways to put new and unique things in that schedule to keep the interest up. And finally, make sure that those things include physical exercise for both the body and the mind. And what about the, the feeling of claustrophobia, of confinement? I, I don't know how big the uh, International Space Station is the living quarters for you. Perhaps you could expand on that. Just tell us how you deal with that. When I lived in space, the living quarters, the station was about the size of a three bedroom house. We had a small area to prepare meals and then we had a small single bathroom. Uh, so for three people, it was very manageable. Uh, the issue is you can't really get outside, right? You can't go out and smell the air and feel the breeze and see the sunshine. So we had to find ways to distance ourselves when we needed a little private time or figure out how we can get our work done a little faster so we might have a chance to look out the window or to answer emails or to make telephone calls. We had yeah. some capability to communicate with the folks on Earth. And just like you know, people living in a small house, you're going to be bumping into the same people over and over again for days, weeks, months. How do you handle those relationships to make sure they don't break down? Communication is always very important. And I think that patience is another virtue we have to have. There are going to be times when people do things that are irritating to you or that are not necessarily the way you might do them. And so at that point, you have to kind of look beyond uh, those single issues and kind of see the big picture. Hey, we are here together for a period of time and we have to survive this together and depend on one another. And so little things you have to be willing to let those go. And if yeah. they become irritants such that they're still bothering you, it's time to have a frank discussion and clear the air a little bit so that everybody uh, understands where everyone is coming from. So communication and patience are two keys that you need. It is easier if you have a big place or if you have a big garden, you have somewhere to go. Obviously, you didn't have much of a garden up there, but you did have a wonderful view. Is that something you ever get tired of? Personally, I didn't really get tired of the view unless we were sailing over the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean. The oceans are pretty big and even from space can be kind of dull. But typically, if you picked a time to sail down to the window and look out and see the Earth, it was very peaceful for me. It was calming for me. Uh, it was exciting even just to watch cloud formations. So, you know, people have to be creative when they don't have, or everybody has something. So yeah. maybe it is a big window you can look out and just watch the neighborhood or watch the people that are out or the animals that are out. You know, think of creative ways to change your paradigm for a situation like this. 
And of course, if you were still up in the International Space Station, you would be looking down on a world right now, dealing with one of the biggest crises that anyone can ever remember, and hopefully working together. Uh, Clayton Anderson, thank you so much for your contributions to the Nexus. <laughs>